Okay guys, before we go any further, you are gonna wanna pick the collection you work with because in the album, um, at some points, we are gonna have to put our pattern paper down before adding our flips and flaps and stuff like that for certain elements in the book. So for mine, I'm actually using Winter Farmhouse by Simple Stories. And the funny thing is, is I don't know where I got this collection from. I just found it in my stash. That's what shows you you have just way too much paper. Um, but yeah, I found it and I really like it because it's, it's winter themed more than Christmas themed. And um, I don't know if you guys know, I live in Canada. I live in Alberta, Canada, and we have six pretty close to six months of winter. Winter pretty much starts in October and ends mid-April. Um, so we do, I did need a book that was gonna span that winter kind of Christmas and everything else. And Christmas was really special for us this year as well. Um, you know, just, we were in lockdown here, so we weren't allowed to have anybody over and we weren't allowed to go anywhere. So it was just the four of us and Although it was hard, it was also very unique and special. So I definitely want to document Christmas through that. So I got my pictures printed and I kind of looked at this collection and I saw that a lot of it is, um, a lot of it works with the colors of my decor this year. And another thing that um, I really loved about it, it does have a lot of winter sentiments in it. And right before um, Christmas in November, we got a puppy. And we have one older dog, but we, we got a puppy and we named her Winter. And so um, kind of her couple months are gonna, her first few months are gonna be documented in this book as well. And um, there's a lot of adorable things in here. Um, like there's a sentiment that actually says, hello, Winter, um, just a lot of it. And so I think that's really cool for me to be able to use all of those for the pages that involve her. Um, so that's my little story. Um, so yeah, it's called Winter Farmhouse. It's from Simple Stories. I honestly don't know where I got it. Um, if I can find it anywhere to link it below, I will. Um, so this is, um, it was a collector's essential kit. So it comes with the stickers and the um, uh, chipboard and all of that. So this is the chipboard. There is a little thing in here that says hello winter, but it's kind of fallen out. Um, I even did a tiered tray at Christmas and there's a little tiered tray uh, chipboard sticker. So this is just perfect. I did a hot cocoa thing. Like seriously, this collection couldn't be more perfect for the pictures I'm planning on um, documenting. So this is the sticker sheet. Um, see some winter memories. I'm just, I'm giddy. I don't, I don't know why, but I'm just absolutely giddy. And the let's stay home, seriously, perfection. This collection is, um, super, super sweet. I absolutely love it. Uh, so this is the sticker sheet, as I said, and then here are some of the pattern papers. So this is one of them. And this is definitely to me reads as Christmas. Um, so I like that for the uh, portions of the book that will be Christmas themed. So this is one of them. And then there's cut aparts on the other side here. Um, just, I absolutely love it. And then this is, so these were the four by four cut aparts. And then these are the six by four by six cut aparts. And I absolutely love this door. Like it's just a unique, super cute collection. And then there is this paper here, which isn't my favorite, but I will probably use some of these. Um, I will probably use these um, three by four cut aparts instead of using this side, but I, I can use little strips of it in certain places. And then here are the super cute snowflakes. And I like how the background, the blue is kind of muted. It's showing up a lot more true blue. It's actually more of an aqua. And then here's a little two by two cut aparts, um, which I don't often use. It's freaking cold. I love that. We had a, a spell of like minus 40 like a week ago. So definitely can use that one. And then there's this really cute green kind of plaid. I don't know what you would call it. And then these sweet houses on the other side. And then there's a gingham, it's kind of yellowy. And then these adorable little jars, which you could definitely cut out if you had the patience of Job. <laughs> and then um, there's this brown, it's kind of like a 
white suede brown background and then tiny polka dots. And this side is just, be still my heart. I love that side. And then there's this kind of wood background and these super cute snowflakes. This one's gonna be hard to choose which side I wanna use. And then there's this floral with the pine cones and the black plaid, which definitely that will be what I use on that side. And then there's some sweet birch trees and then a green background with some pine cones, super cute. And then there's this yellowy one, the florals, and then there's like a wood background with florals on it. And then there's like a larger kind of deep red burgundy with this kind of cute little section on the other side here. I'll probably use this side. So that's the collection we're gonna use. Um, like I said, I suggest you choose your collection now uh, so that you can follow along with me and let's get to it. Okay guys, let's get started on this super fun book. So for the cover, which is what we're going to build first, you're going to need two pieces of medium weight chipboard that measure eight and a half by eight and a half. So you're going to need two of these. So this is medium weight. I'm using black chipboard since my paper is black and it just, in case I make any mistakes, it kind of all blends together. So this is eight and a half by eight and a half medium weight chipboard and you're going to need two pieces of that. And then to wrap that, you're going to need two pieces of 65 pound weight cardstock that measure 10 and a half by 10 and a half. So you're going to need two. And then you're also going to need another piece of chipboard that measures four by eight and a half. And you're going to need a piece of 10 and a half by six piece of 65 pound cardstock to wrap that piece of chipboard, that medium weight piece of chipboard. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to wrap one of the eight and a half by eight and a half pieces and then you're going to wrap these two the exact same way the other two that you need okay so what all you need to do is take your piece of chipboard this is our eight and a half by eight and a half and this is our ten and a half by ten and a half piece of 65 65 pound weight cardstock and i am using my fabric tack here to attach my chipboard to my cardstock. You can use any glue you would like. I just like to use the Fabri-Tac when I'm using with lighter weight cardstock. And I'm gonna just put it right in the center here of my cardstock. All right, and then once I have it on there, I'm gonna go ahead and bend up all of my edges, all of the sides of my cardstock and fold it over top of my chipboard. Okay, once you have it all folded up over top of your chipboard, you're gonna take your double-sided tape. I will be using 3 eighths of an inch double-sided tape through this whole project. I like the score tape. Um, I haven't had a lot of success with any other double-sided tape, so this is the one I like to use. So I'm going to attach it to all four sides of my chipboard and then also all four sides of my cardstock on this edge. And I'm going to avoid these squares in the corner that we created by folding because we're gonna cut those away and it's just wasting tape to put, to put it there. Okay, so now I've attached all my tape and I have burnished it on. So all burnishing means is you take your bone folder and really rub it over your tape and then you get really good adherence. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut right across here on all four corners. So we created this square by folding. So we are essentially just going to cut away that square going across diagonally like this, but we're gonna leave about a 16th of an inch between where our chipboard ends here and where our cardstock ends, okay? So just about like this, okay? Just a tiny bit. 
on all four sides. So now we've got all three pieces of our chipboard wrapped. So remember, you're going to use the exact same steps to wrap your other piece of eight and a half by eight and a half, and the exact same steps to wrap your piece that measures four by four and a half, or sorry, four by eight and a half. And you're going to use a ten and a half by six inch piece of cardstock, 60, 65 pound weight cardstock to wrap that. Okay. So now for the sides of our book, what we're going to need is a scoreboard. And you're going to need two pieces of your 110 pound weight cardstock. So you're going to want the heavy cardstock for this. You're going to need two pieces that measure three by eight and a half. Okay. So what you're going to do first is you're going to put it in your scoreboard, just like this with a three inch side going across the top. Make sure you can see here with a three inch side going across the top and you're going to score it half an inch here and you're gonna flip it in your scoreboard and you're gonna score it half an inch on the other side. So then you will have two half inch flaps on both sides of your three inch length here. Now between those two, you're gonna score every eighth of an inch until you come to your next half inch section and then you're gonna stop scoring, okay? And you're gonna to wanna to do that to two pieces like I've done here. And then you're going to attach your score tape to your half inch sections here and attach it so the tape is more to the edge of the cardstock than to the score line. So you'll have a little bit of space because remember our score tape is three eighths, not half an inch. And then I actually like to flip it over so I can see better. And we're just gonna miter all four corners, just like this. and both of your pieces. All right, so once you have it done, you're gonna have a piece that looks like this, okay? So now what you're gonna do is fold your half inch sections with the tape coming up and give it a good score. And we will do the same thing on this side, a good burnish, I should say. All right, and then what we're gonna do is kind of just take the bone folder. I mean, you could leave it square like this if you wanted to, it kind of looks cool like that, but I want mine to look a little bit more rounded. So I'm just taking my bone folder and I'm kind of going underneath it. And I am just working those score lines. And then once you have it kind of bent, you can kind of just with your hands, just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Just give it that nice, more rounded look. And work with it till you're happy with where it's at. And then you're gonna have two pieces that look like this, okay? So what we need to do to create our cover is you're gonna take one of your pieces of eight and a half by eight and a half pieces of chipboard that you've wrapped, and we're gonna attach our little sides to this piece here, okay? So I find the easiest thing to do is just to remove a little bit of your backing, just like this, bend it back and then bend your score line flat, okay? And then we're, you're just gonna attach it right to this edge here. So I like to line up the side that doesn't have the tape yet or the tape isn't exposed yet. And then once it's right where I want it, I press down where I have my exposed tape and then I take out the rest of that tape. Just pull slowly. And then you can adjust and make sure you're still where you wanna be with that. And then press it down, okay? Just like that. So attach the other side the same way. All right, now we have both of our little side flaps attached. Now we're going to attach our four inch piece of chipboard here. And we're gonna attach it right here. So the best way to do that is just go ahead and remove a little bit of your backing again, bend it back. 
Then take your piece, line it up right on this flap, making sure you don't go past your score line over here. And then once you have it, press down here, and then you can just go ahead and remove the rest of your score tape, just like this. And then we have our side over here attached. And now we're gonna attach this side pretty much the same way, just bend back, just like that. And you're gonna grab your other eight and a half by eight and a half piece of chipboard that we've wrapped. I can already tell this is gonna tear. <laughs> and just bend it down and then just adjust the book to however you need. Okay, and then once you have it right where you want it, go ahead and remove the rest of that backing. And then we'll give it a good burnish down. All right, so now we have got our book to this point. So the next thing we need to do is add our magnets for the closure. So we're gonna add our magnets to this flap here. So what you're gonna need is two sets of these large magnets. So these are the basic gray ones. If you had smaller ones, maybe you could do four and that would work. But for me here, I have these ones. So I think they're one by 32 is the size, but they are the larger ones. And I'm just gonna open them up. So when you open them, you're gonna see that some of them have a plus and some of them have a negative. So you are going to need two negatives and two pluses. And then they just snap them together. These are very strong magnets. And I'm just going to attach them kind of right there. And about right here, just like this. Okay, so that's basically where you want them. And then you can go ahead and remove the backing from those. Just like this. And then you'll bring your book over and just kind of lift it up. Make sure it lines up nicely, nice and square. Kind of bring it at an angle so these are kind of facing down so you're not sticking them yet so just line it up on this edge here and make sure your top and bottom are lined up then you can press them on there just kind of give it a good wiggle and that is how our book will be closed and it's kind of wiggly wobbly right now but once of all of our inside pieces are in, it's gonna be a lot less so. Okay, so we're gonna start by opening the book and our little smaller flap is going to be to this side. <clears throat> and the first flap we're gonna put into here is your piece that measures eight and a quarter wide by 10 and a quarter tall, okay? And then on the 10 and a quarter inch side, so you're gonna put it in your scoreboard with the 10 and a quarter going across the top. You're gonna to score it half an inch and at two inches, okay? And that's gonna give us a one and a half inch gusset right there, okay? So this is gonna get attached right along the top here, just like this. So remember our book is eight and a half wide and our piece is eight and a quarter wide. So you're gonna center it between your two sides here and it's gonna leave about an eighth of an inch on both sides, okay? So go ahead and remove a little bit of your backing, just like this, and then line it up across the top there and it's gonna go all the way to the top. Once you have it lined up, go ahead and press down over here where you've got your tape exposed and pull it across and just make sure it's still lined up and then you can press that down and then you can open it up and burnish that tape on. So this is the top. So this is gonna be the first thing you see when you come inside the book, okay? So now just for the sake of getting our flaps on, I am flipping it upside down, okay? So 
our magnets are on this side now and this is still the top it's just upside down i'm just gonna lay this down just for to line it up and now i'm gonna attach my second slap now this is the bottom of the book but it's just flipped upside down so the second flap measures eight and a quarter by nine and three quarters and on the nine and three quarter side so the nine and three quarter side is in your scoreboard you're going to score at half an inch and at one and three quarters okay so half an inch and one and three quarters yes and then you will attach your score tape to your little half inch flap and burnish it down and miter your corners okay so i'm going to remove a little bit of my backing so this time what we need to do is make sure we're in alignment with our top flap okay so you're still going to line it up across the top and make sure that you have about an eighth of an inch of space on both sides before you press it down just make sure that these two are lined up so your top flap and your bottom flap are lined up along the sides okay and you can remove the rest of your tape and just press it down and then again open the book and burnish it and then we can flip it back over and then those are your first two flaps so this one our bottom one is a quarter inch shorter than our top flap because i didn't want them bumping into each other under here so all the way on the inside back of our book here so this is the inside back we are going to do a pocket so this piece measures eight and a quarter by five and a half and this is our 110 pound cardstock which is what i will be using unless i tell you otherwise um so it measures eight and a quarter by five and a half and on the five and a half inch side we scored it half an inch and then i attached my score tape and i mitered the edges okay so this piece is going to go right down here and we are going to stay away from our score line from our little bottom flap here about a sixteenth of an inch okay so just remove a bit of it and again we're just going to center it in there because it is a quarter of an inch smaller than our book base so we're just going to put it right down here right along that score line and if you can probably just center it on the flap because it's the same size so you'll get the same width going both ways and then just remove that backing just like this and then you can grab your bone folder and just burnish that on right there okay now i'm going to try to move it up a little bit more so i can show you what we're going to do next so what we're going to do next is attach our little pieces that are going to allow our pocket to be expandable okay so you're going to need two pieces that measure four and seven eighths tall so that's just an eighth of an inch shy of five inches okay because our pocket is five inches and i don't want it as tall as my pocket so it's four and seven eighths tall and two inches wide you're going to need two pieces then you're going to put it in your scoreboard with your two inch side across the top and you're going to score at half an inch and at one and one and a half and then that's going to give you four sections okay so you're going to need to do that twice so how we're going to fold it is you're going to fold your first score line down you give it a burnish and then your second one in just like this and then the third one again will be facing downwards okay and then just give that all a really really good burnish okay then you're going to attach your score tape to these two side pieces just like so and then your other side piece making sure to stay within the 
space we have and you can trim off any excess tape. Okay, so now these are gonna get attached. This is what they look like. They look like a W, okay? So they're gonna get attached with these points, like the point of the W are gonna be facing inwards, okay? And how we're gonna attach them is right along this side and this side of the flap that we have, that's gonna be making our pocket here. And you're gonna put them all the way to the top, okay? So remove a bit of your backing. Again, make sure your point is going inwards into the, towards the inside of your pocket and line it up with the top of your pocket. And then once you have it nice and lined up, you can go ahead and remove the rest of that backing. So that is gonna give us a tiny space down here because we don't want our little our little mechanism just jammed up against that bottom score line. So attach the other one the same way. Remember, we want our point going inwards. Remove a bit of that backing, just like so, and attach it over here on this side. So always line up your side that does not have the exposed tape yet and then go ahead and remove the rest of that backing just like so okay give that a burnish down on both sides now that is going to come up and attach on the inside here but first we have to work with the top of our pocket okay so the top of our pocket the flap that's going to come down to close measures three and three quarters of an inch wide by eight and a quarter tall and on the three and three quarter inch side you're going to score it half an inch and then at three quarters of an inch and that's going to give you the little quarter inch space there and we don't want to miter these edges we don't want to miter these but do attach your score tape to that little half inch flap on the outside okay so this is the inside of the pocket we want to attach it to the outside then on the back just so we don't have to erase later from your three quarter of an inch score line here down, you're gonna measure one inch, okay? So you're gonna measure and mark so that there's an inch of space between there and there, and you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then you're gonna do a mark at four and one eighth, because the length of our pocket here is eight and a quarter, so four and an eighth is exactly half, okay? You're gonna grab your paper cutter, um, or you could do this with a, a metal ruler and a craft knife. I'm just going to use the paper cutter. And what I'm going to do is line it up so that these two little lines intersect right like this. And I'm going to cut across there just like so. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my little line on the other side here. My other one inch mark. Line it up in the track and cut across just like this okay so that's the shape you're going to get so what we're going to do with this now is we are going to just remove our backing our entire backing from this from our two little expandable pocket mechanisms here move the whole backing and then you're going to take the top of your pocket and you're just going to tack it to both sides and we have tape there and they're the exact same width so they should line up perfectly and you're going to make sure not to attach it to your quarter inch section just your half inch okay so make sure you get it nice and lined up on both sides get it lined up before you attach it down make sure that it folds nicely over the top of your pocket so now go ahead and remove the backing from the back of the top of your pocket okay and then we're just going to go ahead and lay it all down into the back of our book here
just like so. And then you can go ahead and give these corners a press. And then that creates our little expandable pocket at the back. So for the closure on our little expandable pocket here, what we're gonna do is first put our little pattern paper layer on this top flap here. Okay, so for that, you are gonna need a piece of pattern paper that measures two and three quarters by eight. And then all we're gonna do is lay it on top here and just mark it. So you're gonna center it right in there, leaving your little quarter of an inch space around the three sides. And then you're just gonna mark about a quarter of an inch up from this edge and that edge. So just mark it. And also just mark your little center mark right there, okay? And then you're gonna bring your paper cutter back in and you're gonna do the exact same thing we did at the top, for the top, and just line it up and cut across. Just get it lined up and cut across. And then the same thing on this side. Just like so. And that is how you get your little layer. All right, so this is gonna go right on here, but before we attach it, we first need to get our little circle on there for the mechanism. So all I'm gonna do is grab a little foam pad. You can um, grab a magazine or anything like that that you're okay with poking through. And then you're gonna need a circle or whatever kind of shape you want. I just die cut some little circles out of my black cardstock. And I'm gonna just place it where I want it on here. So I want mine about right there. And I'm gonna use a pokey tool. And I'm gonna find the center of my circle and poke through. And then I'm gonna get a brad. So these are my little brads I'm using. I'm using little white brads and I'm going to put my brad right through there and I'm gonna open it up on the back, just like so. Just get it as flat as you can. And then I'm gonna take a piece of tape and secure that brad, just like so. And then take my bone folder and just kind of press it down even a little bit more, just like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the backing there. And I'm gonna use the art glitter glue for this. So just get glue all over it. You can use any wet glue you'd like. You can use tape, you can use a tape runner. I will often use tape runner to attach my pattern paper. And then just center it on there nicely. Now we're going to attach our bottom layer right to this here. And the bottom layer measures four and three quarters by eight. And it's just going to get attached right here. And I just use this pretty pattern to get the cute little birdie. Okay, so for this, what we're gonna do is take our pattern paper that we're using. Make sure it's nicely centered with our quarter inch layer all the way around. Close this down and then just take and place your circle where you're gonna want it. And then you can kind of remove that and then just put 
a little dot there with our pencil. So we kind of know where we want that. It doesn't have to be exact. And then you're going to again, get your little pad that you can poke through and just center that circle right on there. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. And then just poke your hole again and grab your brad, put it through there and we're going to open it up. And then before I attach it, I'm going to make sure that it's more or less in the right place. Perfect. All right, so go ahead and put your glue on again. And we do have to secure that brad. Just remove your tape. And then just attach that on there. And then for the closure, I'm gonna use some twine. This is just some twine I bought at the dollar store. And it has a knot in it, so I will cut that off. All right, so all we need to do for this is I usually like to start with my top circle and you just go under the circle and I like to tie a knot, just one. Tie the knot. And then I like to go up to the top and tie a knot and that kind of makes it so that there's not an unevenness in your circle and then you just bring it down and bring it underneath your other circle and you can do as many loops as you want I usually go three so first I'm going to cut off my excess up here and then there and that is the cute little closure for our pocket Okay, so let's work on this section here. So this is our inside back, and this is the smaller flap that comes up from the bottom. And we're gonna be working on the inside back of that flap, okay? So we're gonna have a double-sided waterfall right here on this side. This piece of your cardstock measures four and three quarters by seven and seven eighths, okay? And you're gonna score it half an inch and then add three quarters of an inch on the four and three quarter inch side, okay? So seven and seven eighths is just one eighth shorter than your eight inch mark, okay? And that's gonna go right here. But I want to build my waterfall first before putting it in. So this side of the waterfall is going to have seven pieces, seven waterfall flaps that measure four and a half by four, okay? So it's gonna have seven of them going down. So you're gonna cut four and a, seven at four and a half by four and score on the four and a half inch side at half an inch on all seven, okay? And I am going to attach these using my art glitter glue, okay? So we're gonna start with the top one here and you are going to add your glue to the flap here. And I'm just gonna turn the paper just so it's easier for me to see. And you're gonna attach it as far as the outside of your flap as you can get, okay? Making sure not to go over your score line. So that's the first one on there. All right, and then the second one is gonna go right underneath that one. But before I attach them, I do like to close my flap and make sure everybody is lining up. So I'm, I'm adding my glue to this flap here again. And I'm just gonna follow along underneath this one. I'm just gonna butt this one up against this one. And 
Okay, so now we've attached all seven of our little waterfall pieces. Now I'm just gonna go through and burnish them down really nicely. Just like so. And then we'll attach our closure. So for the closure, you're gonna need a piece of your cardstock, your black cardstock that measures two inches wide by three inches tall. And then on the three inch side, you're gonna score half an inch. So you get this little piece like this and we're just going to attach it all the way to the bottom, just centered in here. So I'm just gonna grab my glue. Just like so and attach it right into the center down here all the way to the bottom. Just like so. Okay. Give it a good burnish down. All right. Now we're going to use the envelope style closure like we did with the twine back here. Um, we're gonna do it a little bit differently, not a whole lot. So I've cut out one of the four by four cutouts from the collection and I cut off a quarter inch on two of the sides so that it can layer nicely into here. And then for my envelope closure up here, I just cut out one of the sentiments, or this is, sorry, one of the stickers from the sticker sheet, and I placed it onto black cardstock, and I cut around it, and then I put a brad through and through the paper, just like we did with the circles, except this is just a different shape. It's just kind of a fun way to use your stickers and your elements. So that's gonna go right on here. So I'm just going to remove the backing of my tape and just put my glue on here, just like so. And I'm gonna center it right in here, leaving my little quarter of an inch space all the way around. Beautiful. Burnish the back too if you want. Okay, just like that. And then for down here, I have cut a piece of my cardstock that measures two and a quarter tall by one and three quarters wide. And then I did just add a circle here with the brad, just like we did up here earlier. And I have secured it with tape and that's just gonna go right on here, just like this. So I'm going to remove again the backing of my tape, in theory. <laughs> Sometimes the backing can be so stubborn. Okay, and I'm just adding my arc glitter glue. And that is just gonna go right on here, just like so. Just give it a little burnish down. Okay, now we're gonna take our twine. I'm using the same brown twine. And again, I am going to just loop it under once. And this also helps to secure the brad a little bit and then come up to the top. And tie it again. So exact same process as for this, you're just using a different shape. All right, and then bring it down here, around your circle, and then back up here. How stinking cute is that? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so now we can cut our excess off and this little bit here. And then that is the closure 
for our cute little waterfall. How sweet. I absolutely love it. Okay, so on the other side of the same flap, we are going to do a four by six waterfall. So it's the exact same idea. Our piece here measures six and a half by four. We have three flaps that are gonna go on this side, okay? Six and a half by four. And you're gonna score it half an inch on the four inch side. Or sorry, you're gonna score half an inch on the six inch side. And I'm just going to add my glue here. And we're gonna attach these the exact same way we attached our four inch our four by four pieces. Okay, so I've attached my three waterfall pieces. And again, we're just gonna go through and give this a good burnish, just like that. All right, and now we're going to do exactly the same thing, except for here, I've used one of the four by six cut aparts and cut it down a quarter inch on the top and the side so that it fits nicely into here. And then I used one of the little wreath stickers because how cute does that look on the door? Um, I used one of the little wreath stickers and I cut around, I put it on my black cardstock and cut it out and then I put my brad through just like we did for the other one. And I secured it at the back here. So again, we're just going to add our glue. Just like so. And then attach it right here. This is gonna be the book of envelope closures. <laughs> All right, so cute. All right, so that is on there nicely. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did on the other side here for the closure. So this is the exact same thing. It measures three by two. I scored it at half an inch on the three inch side. My pattern paper is two and three, two and a quarter by one and three quarters. And then I've put my circle and my brad right here. And we're just gonna attach it right down here. So now we've got that one done. Both sides are finished and they are looking super, super cute. So now we can go ahead and attach this to our flap right here. So it is uh, in eighth of an inch smaller than the flap. So just attach it all the way to the bottom here. Okay, so just go ahead, remove a little bit of your backing and we are going to line it up. So it's all the way lined up with the bottom and all the way with this side of the book. And then we can press down over here and remove the rest of our backing, just like so. So we've got that in now. So let's work on the flap that's gonna come in from this side. So your piece of cardstock measures seven and seven eighths of an inch tall. So remember that's just one eighth shorter than your eight inches and nine and one eighth wide, okay? Wide like this. So with it in your scoreboard, with the nine and one eighth going across the top, you're gonna score at half an inch and at one. So you're gonna have a half an inch that's gonna attach to your book and you're gonna have a half inch gusset, okay? So that is gonna come in from this side here. But again, I want to add my little flaps first before I attach it in. So on this side here, I have one that measures seven and seven eighths tall by six and a half wide. And on the six and a half inch side, you're gonna score it half an inch, attach your tape, miter your corners, and then it's gonna get attached right along this side. So just line up where you don't have your exposed adhesive and it's gonna go all the way to the edge, just like that. And then just pull out the rest of your tape, or sorry, your backing. 
and then you can burnish that. All right, and now this piece is gonna come in from this side and this piece measures four inches wide by seven and seven eighths tall. And on the four inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch, attach your tape, miter your corners, and it's gonna get attached right along this second score line here, okay? Not the first one, the second one. So remove a bit of your backing, line it up, press down over here and remove the rest of your backing, just like that. And then you can give that a good burnish down as well. Okay, so for the closure of these two flaps, we're gonna use another envelope closure, but before I do that, I just wanna tell you guys, and I will edit it in to the previous section, this flap here, I had said was four, by seven and seven eighths, but it's actually four and a half by seven and seven eighths. So you're you're gonna score half an inch on the four and a half inch side, and then your flap would be four inches by seven and seven eighths tall, okay? So just wanted to tell you guys that, but I will edit it in. Um, I'll just put a little note there in the tutorial, okay? Um, so for here, my piece of pattern paper measures seven and five eighths tall. So that's just one eighth larger than seven and a half. And then it is three and three quarters wide. And so what I did is I closed this flap and then I just kind of decided where I was gonna want my circle here for the closure. And that's where I popped it, same thing. And I need, I wanted to say something else. If ever you guys would forget to add this to the pattern paper before you add it onto the book. If you added the pattern paper and like, oh shucks, I, I didn't add that circle, that's totally fixable. Do it right onto the flap and it would come out back here and then you just cover this with pattern paper. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, okay? Not a big deal at all. Okay, for this side here, you're gonna need a piece of pattern paper that measures seven and five eighths tall by five and three quarters wide and it's gonna go right here, okay? And then on top of here, I have a piece of black cardstock that measures eight and a half by four and a quarter, and then you're just gonna sc score it at four and a quarter right in the middle on the eight and a half inch side, okay? And that's gonna go right here on top of our pattern paper. So let's get that done. I'm just gonna glue on my pattern paper first, just with my arc glitter glue. I am having such a hard time deciding with these pattern papers what to use, what to use first or like what sides to use and what sides to glue down. Okay, so we've got that on here. So now we're going to attach this little kind of card booklet right here in the center. And I'm again just going to use my our glitter glue just all over the back of it and you're gonna attach it so the opening is going this way, okay? So just center it as much as you can, just like that. Make sure the glue is nice and spread out under there. All right, so then on top of here, I am gonna use one of the four by four cut aparts, which I did not cut down because this is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then I took another one of the little stickers and it's the hot cocoa one. And I backed it onto black cardstock and again, just popped my brad through and that is gonna be going right here. And I did secure it with tape on the back so we can remove that backing and attach our, put our glue on like so and then that can go right here in the center of our little booklet it's like so and I just love how there's an extra little photo spot on there so we are again going to take our twine and tie under here. And I'm just 
just gonna trim it right there and trim off my excess here and just tuck it under. And then that cute little page is finished. So now we just need to attach this into our book. So just grab it. And remember it is getting attached down here opposite to our little double waterfall flap. It's gonna get attached right along this side. So just remove a bit of your backing and you can bend down your gusset so you can see it better and then attach it all the way to this side and all the way to the bottom. All right, and then press down over here. Remove the rest of that backing. And then you can burnish it. And there you go. There's your little flap over here. And that's gonna fold in. I'm not gonna add magnets to it or anything because it's gonna be kind of sitting on top of itself. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, I am gonna end part one of the tutorial right here because I have been editing as I go and we're <laughs> getting close to the hour mark. Um, so part two will be linked right below here. I'm going to upload them all at the same time so nobody's waiting, but part one will end here. Okay guys, see you in the next one.